This is the Algebra 1 part, Algebra 1B part 1, there we go, Algebra 1B part 1, uh, Unit 2 Portfolio Assignment. Uh, it's on exponential growth and decay and exponential models and exponential functions, all stuff exponential. Uh, there are three uh, three tasks that are listed in the in the in the curriculum. Uh, we're actually only going to do two of those tasks, so I'm shortening the assignment a little bit. Two tasks, you get full credit, so don't worry. Uh, the first task has to do with bacteria growth. The second task has to do with uh, uh, population growth and decay. So let's let's look at exponential growth, the exponential growth model. Uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do task one. So follow along, take notes, and then when we reach certain points, I'm gonna give you instructions on what to do on yours because you're going to use different numbers. You're going to use different examples than I am. Uh, this the what I'm doing is to serve as an example. So here's the idea. Let's let's label this task one. Make sure to head your paper clearly. If you have graph paper, that's best. If you have lined paper, that's all right. If you have printer paper, that's that'll work if you're neat. Okay, task one has to do with bacteria. Now, bacteria are single-celled organisms that 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 double that 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 split. All right, they split. It's called mitosis, where a cell splits into two cells. And different bacteria split at different rates. For the sake of simplifying things, we're going to say each bacteria, each bacteria divides into so many bacteria every hour. Okay, uh, just to keep it simple. Now I'm going to say I'm going to say my growth rate, my growth rate is three our growth factor, actually that's better, growth factor is three. So what that is saying is I'm going to pretend that my bacteria divides into three bacteria every hour. So here's a table of, to describe what's going on. In hour, hour zero, in hour zero, there is one lonely bacteria. So here he is, he's right here, and I'm just gonna put him over here, okay? one lonely bacteria. At hour number one, at hour number one, something miraculous happens. That single bacteria divides into three new bacteria. Okay, three bacteria through the magic of mitosis. Okay, and so now there are three bacteria. But what happens the next hour, and hour number two, is each one of those bacteria divide into three more bacteria. Okay, so if each one divides into three more bacteria, let's count them, there are now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bacteria. Okay, you kind of get the idea. At hour number three, there are three. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. There are 27 bacteria. Okay. Now, as all good mathematicians know, we're looking for patterns. We're looking for a rule that seems to be repeating. And so what we want to do is we want to come up with a rule for what's going on. Hopefully you've noticed by now that every time, every time, in fact, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can write down, write down what you think, what you think is going on. Okay, now that you've written it down, what seems to be happening is we're multiplying by three at every step. One times three is three. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. Okay, and so we have a, an exponential growth model. It's a, an exponential growth model is a repeated multiplication model. It's multiplying over and over and over again. So let's continue our, our pattern here. Okay, after four hours, there are 27 times three. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring up my Windows calculator. 
just to make things simple here. I know it's 81, but I want to simplify things and show you how you can do this. If I start with 1, hit times 3 equals. Okay, I get 3. Now, if I keep hitting equals, it's going to keep multiplying by 3. So times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. times 3 is 243 times 3 is 729 okay so in 6 hours our population of bacteria has exploded to 729 bacteria okay following that rule of multiplying by 3 every single time okay and just a reminder, make sure you're writing this down as we go, okay? I am going to get rid of, get rid of this over here and just track the table, okay? Now, the, the task that we've been given is to figure out what, how many bacteria there are in 24 hours, okay? In 24 hours. So we're going to extend this a little bit. I'm not going to write down the table for every single number of bacteria in between, but I am going to do this, okay? I'm going to put 24 as my next number on the table. We're going to jump to that, and we're going to use our calculator here. 729 is in six hours, so we're going to keep track here. I'm just going to count six hours. 7 hours, 8 hours, 9 hours, 10 hours, 11 hours, 12 hours, 13 hours, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. One day later, there are 282,429,536,488 bacteria. Let's write that down. Okay. 282 billion 429 million 536,481 bacteria. Now, another thing mathematicians do is it would be great if I could have a formula, a formula that calculates all of this. So I don't have to. What if I asked, you know, asked you to find out, well, how many how many bacteria would there be after after a month, right? Could you imagine doing that for every hour, how long that would take hitting enter on the calculator? Plus, what are the chances you'd make a mistake somewhere along the way? So there's got to be a better way to do this. So I want to examine this just a little bit further here. We can express each one of these as a math problem. The first one is 1. The second one is 1 times 3. The second one is 1 times 3 times 3. The next one is 1 times 3 times 3 times 3. We're just putting in another times 3 every single time. 1 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 1 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 1 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, okay? And, but there's, there, uh, again, mathematicians ask, is there a shorter way to write this? Well, this is repeated multiplication, and we learned that to write repeated multiplication, we use exponents, okay? So this is just 1 times 3 to the 6th power. This is just 1 times 3 to the 5th power. This is 1 times 3 to the 4th power. This is 1 times 3 to the 3rd power. This is 1 times 3 to the 2nd power. 1 times 3. I can say 1 times 3, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow the pattern. Look at the pattern. The exponents are going 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Whoops. And 1. There we go. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's follow the pattern on down then. Can we express this as 1 times 3 to the 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0? 
And the answer is yes. In fact, this serves as another a, a good demonstration of why something to the power of zero is always one. Anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, let's look at what's going on here. Look at what's going on here. We have a formula brewing. One and three remain the same in all of them, but the, the exponent keeps changing. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Notice that matches the number of hours. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Therefore, I can replace this, something that remains the same is called a constant. Something that changes over time or otherwise is called a variable. This is a variable. In an algebra, we replace variables with letters. So I can write this as 1 times 3 to the power of x. To fill out the formula, y equals 1.3 to the power of x is our general formula. Isn't that cool? Right? 1 times 3 to the power of x. I almost stepped on a cat. <laughs> All right, let's check it and see if it works in the case of our 24-hour example. So let's figure out y equals 1 times 3 to the power of 24 and see what my calculator does. All right, let's see. All right, clear this. 1 times 3 and I'm looking for a y to the x. It doesn't have one. So I'm going to change calculators to a scientific calculator. Okay, so I'm going to do 1 times 3, and then it's x to the y, 24, equals. And there's my number, 282,429,536,000. And that is much easier to calculate than it was to hit enter 24 times. Plus, I'm more sure of the result. So let's sum up the, the results of what we did. The, the formula for exponential growth, the exponential function, we call it. Okay, is y equals a times b to the x, okay? And the, the, the parts are this, okay? A is what we call the start value. It's the value of the function when x is 0, okay? It's also called the y-intercept. B is called the, the growth factor, the growth factor. Okay, and it tells me how fast the population grows. Now your assignment is to do cre recreate this table, but use a growth factor other than three. I use three, you can use two, you can use four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, but use some number other than three. Don't use three, I won't give you credit for it. It's not just a matter of writing down what I did. I want you to do these calculations and figure out this, fill out this, this table for that case. Now there's one more thing we need to look for, look at, and that is that start value. The, the question asks, what would happen if, is asked, what would happen if we started with 100 bacteria instead of just one? Well, in that case, the formula would become y equals 100 times 3 to the power of x. There, the, the equation would start at 100 and go up from there. So my numbers would be 100, 300, 900, 2700, 8100, 243 hundred, if that's a, that's a proper, not a proper way to say it, but it works. It's, it's simple. 72900, which would actually be 72,900. That's okay. So that's, that's a brief explanation of that. So look for, I'm looking for a notes page just like this, but for a growth factor other than 3. 
use 2, use 4, use 5, use 6, use 7, use 8, use 9. Use one of those. All right. Let me know if you have any questions.